Welcome to Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kindlewater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. And now, Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kindlewater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater. We are introducing you to candidates who are running for Bernalillo County Sheriff. We've invited them all and those who have accepted our invitations are going to be our guests and I'm so pleased to have a guest for you today. Someone who accepted our invitation, Philip Snedeker. He is running for Bernalillo County Sheriff and he's been a sheriff before in Quay County. Actually he's told me that he's kind of seen law enforcement from all sides. As an arresting officer, he's worked in corrections where he has seen in a detention center the, um, the people in custody, and then he's helped kind of release some of them in, paro in, in probation and parole. So that's seen law enforcement at all sides. So we're going to find out from Philper, Philip uh, Snedeker, his role, his 47-year role in law enforcement, and, that what, and what that means to him as he runs for Sheriff of Burleo County. So please stay with us as we meet Philip Snedeker right after this. The National Education Association of New Mexico, a union of teachers and school staff, believes every child deserves to learn at a school that inspires their imagination, cultivates their curiosity, and ensures a fulfilling life. Public schools should provide all our students with small class sizes and one-on-one -on -one attention. NEA New Mexico asks you to join us so together we can end the teacher and staff shortage and invest in our public education system once and for all. Sponsored by NEA New Mexico. <laughs> I'm still smiling because I keep telling my guests 47 years of public service and you want to continue at the top post in the Berlino County Sheriff's Office. Phil Snedeker, why in the world are you wanting to continue in public service after 47 years? Uh, Diane, uh, I am a member of this community, Berlino County, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm very interested in the welfare of this community and the safety of its citizens. I've uh, spent my entire adult life, if, as you've characterized uh, very eloquently, uh, in uh, uh, the service of the public, uh, in law enforcement corrections. I'm interested in continuing to do that, and I sincerely mean this, uh, Diane. Uh, I'm prepared as a trained professional administrator, as a trained professional law enforcement officer, with the assistance of the good men and women of law enforcement in this community, and its citizens to work in unison and move this community, this county, and this city to greatness, to ensure the safety and well-being of our citizens. Even though you were a sheriff in Quay County, you've been in our community, in Bernalillo County, for over 30 years living here, seeing what's going on, as many of us have seen, not only on our program, but on the news, on the front page of the newspaper, and sometimes it's not very good. Um, but your background is very varied, and as I mentioned, you've seen all sides. You told me that arresting them, operating a detention center where the defendants were in custody, and then overseeing prob probation and parole where they are yes. released back into our community after serving their time. But you started as New Mexico State Police, Santa Fe, Farmington, Tucumcari. Ten years with New Mexico State Police as an arresting officer. Yes, I did, uh, uh, Diane. I, uh, I grew up, as you uh, uh, stated, in, in Silver City. Uh, uh, I went to Western New Mexico University and I obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree uh, in Social Science, uh, a Master of Arts degree in Educational Administration. And uh, during my years uh, in college, I was employed by the local police department. I grew to love that work very much. Uh, when I completed my formal education, I, I was employed by the New Mexico State Police uh, for a 10-year period. The, the only reason I left the state police, it's a fine organization, we did a lot of good things. I was asked by uh, a good number of citizens in uh, Tucumcari, where I was stationed at the time, to consider running for county sheriff, and, and I did that, and I was very uh, blessed and successful in that endeavor. 
Now you were county sheriff, Quay County Sheriff, for two years. Is it a two-year position or a four-year yeah, position? Those were two-year terms at that two -year time. Terms. Yeah. Okay. And at that time, you oversaw the detention center as a county sheriff. Here in Bernalillo County, that's not the case. We have a separation between the sheriff overseeing the officers, the sheriff deputies, but not the detention center. Here. That's correct. You're correct. So after uh, being sheriff for two years, what did you go on to do? At that time, I uh, uh, was fortunate enough to be employed by the uh, State of New Mexico Probation and Parole Division here in Albuquerque. That was in 1991 uh, as a probation and parole officer. I started as an entry-level probation and parole officer right here in Albuquerque. Uh, subsequently, two years later, I was uh, promoted uh, to the position of uh, uh, district office administrator. I was assigned to uh, the Los Lunas office. Now, I worked there for a 13-year period overseeing our operations there for the 13th Judicial District Court. That involved uh, Cibola County, Grants, Sandoval County, the town of Bernalillo, and uh, right here in Albuquerque, Bernalillo County. So very uh, uh, gratifying and very intense work. Uh, uh, I uh, worked there for a 13-year period. I was subsequently uh, promoted and came back here to Albuquerque. I've always lived in Albuquerque, uh, and I've spent the last 15 years of my career, my 47-year <laughs> career, uh, working here in Albuquerque, directly at the district court, uh, overseeing uh, our uh, our office's uh, uh, operations there, providing uh, investigative and supervision services. Uh, Diane. And what does that mean? For the, I think there's 13 judges, district uh, there's court. 15. 15 district, district court, court judges. judges. Downtown we, in the judicial complex. That's correct. Okay. At 4th and Lomas. And it's what we do, Diane, we monitor people that they either divert from the criminal justice system and place on probation. This is usually first time offenders. We monitor them for compliance with court directives, such as drug testing, completion of counseling payment of restitution, uh, improving their educational uh, level, things of this sort. So you do this investigation of folks um, before they see the judge again, the second time they see the, at what part no, of the process? That's, that's when they've been diverted by the judges. We only become involved uh, post adjudicatory, after sentencing, okay? Now, what you're referring to, Diane, we also, the very uh, interesting part of that job, I oversaw the, uh, the investigative function of it, where we do background criminal history checks, uh, social background of all defendants that are appearing before the, the district court judges for sentencing, and we, uh, give the judges all the information about their prior history, their level of involvement in the uh, 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 criminal justice system, uh, number of arrests, uh, family history. Uh, so the two facets of investigation, one yes. prior to sentencing yes. and one prior to release back to the community. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. And just so you'll know, Diane and everyone will know, uh, and we do a fantastic job. Right here in Bernalillo County alone, we supervise 7,700 people. There's 7,700 people under supervision here in Albuquerque. Now that's a very kind word to say under, 7,700 criminals? That's correct. Criminals, I'd call them They've criminals. They've been diverted <laughs> from the system because they're first time offenders. And, and when you say diverted, you're saying a polite word of released? They were released under terms and conditions imposed by the courts rather than being sent to prison. Now, serious violent offenders are sent to prison, then they are paroled under terms and conditions of the parole board. We supervise those people. We, uh, wow. we deal with very serious offenders, we do. But there are 7,700 of them. Right here in Albuquerque. That this administrative court services for the second judicial district court pro uh, probation and parole yes. division oversees. Yes, we, we supervise how many, eight, eight. How large is the staff? <laughs> uh, approximately 200 people. Wow. okay. But you just retired from that. I did. To run for Bernalillo County Sheriff. I did. Yes, Why? I, because I think I can make a difference, uh, Diane. I have, uh, uh, I think, a unique and extensive background. I'm educationally prepared as an administrator. I've worked in all facets. I can bring a comprehensive, I think, approach 
uh, uh, to make in a, a meaningful impact here. We want to reduce crime. We want to uh, uh, see that violent repeat offenders are incarcerated. We want to have very strong uh, police presence in all our areas of responsibility in neighborhoods. And we want to hold people accountable. We also want to, uh, when appropriate, we want to see that people are uh, provided with treatment uh, for drug and alcohol problems, for mental health issues. We want to see that everything is done in a constitutionally sound manner, okay, in an in, in appropriate manner by professional law enforcement officers, educated officers, officers dedicated to their community and the service of that community and protecting that community. Uh, Philip Snedeker is running for Bernalillo County Sheriff. Um, I'm still sticking with that number 7700 that you've done investigations. <laughs> uh, not you personally, but mm -hmm. your staff of 200. Do you have a rough idea of how many of those who are overseen by the courts who are criminals have drug abuse in their background or mental health issues? What would you say, it's, half, 80%? It's 80%, Diane, it's 80 you, the figure, yes. It's, it, the, we refer to it, and it, that's a psychological uh, uh, appropriate medical term. They're affected by either drug and alcohol problems or mental health issues. Affected, okay. Yes. And okay. This is what we also need to do and what I was referring to. We need to work in conjunction and very cooperatively and collaboratively with all our community providers, with probation and parole, with the courts, et cetera, to see that people are appropriately screened and appropriately uh, managed. And we need to, people say, how, do you, how are you planning on reducing crime? Well, number one, good law enforcement, basic, strict, aggressive, constitutionally sound law enforcement, okay? Okay, we also are going to do it with innovative crime fighting strategies which involve treating people, treating the underlying root causes of criminal behavior and, and seeing that they are referred to and appropriately treated. If we put uh, options in place for people, it's always been my finding that and we give them alternatives to a criminal lifestyle then they will be productive citizens. Philip Snedeker, how did you find this? And throughout my career, 47 year career, in law enforcement and uh, the correction system, uh, I've learned it. I can remember- They don't choose crime. They wouldn't choose crime if they had other options. I don't know of anybody that, that, that willingly says, uh, I'm gonna commit to this type of uh, ideation that that is not how well people. when they break into someone's home and steals all their jewelry and their things that's a choice they've made Certainly. and since it's so easy to do without any consequences it seems in Berlio County that they might figure it's easier to go break in and steal somebody else's belongings and then go earn my own. It seems as a certainly no. Law I, I would agree but, with that assessment, but I would say there's something underlying that thought process, Diane, that is driving that. Okay, they they have okay, and they need to be held accountable because they're not going to be allowed to. Oh, oh, you poor thing, you know you. Uh, you just did this and we're not going to do anything to you. They need to be held accountable. That's how, the only way you change behavior is people know there's consequences, they're held accountable. Uh, okay, but we've got to identify why did this person do this and treat them, provide options, change their uh, ideation, change their thought processes. A lot of people are doing these things because and I'm not saying it's justified. It is not justified. It, they're doing these things though because they don't have job opportunities. They don't have the proper housing. Uh, they don't have uh, anywhere uh, uh, to live. Uh, they're uh, lacking in educational uh, opportunity, things of this sort. And they're, they're affected, the majority of them, 80% over the majority of them by drug and alcohol problems. So, so overall, okay. we need to, the and there's and mental health oh. issues. Uh, overall, what do you, just asking, what do you think of the 80% are mental health compared to drug and alcohol? Uh, our hard. experience has always been that almost every person you have that has, has some form of a diagnosed and legitimate mental health issue that also has drug and alcohol problems. Okay. So it, it's equal.
No. So most of them have them. In they the do, okay. and that. Okay. Uh, wow. What you're getting to, Diane, and we we've got to address it. I know all about it. Uh, we can't use jails, uh, you know, to treat people. Okay, those jails are not treatment uh, uh, facilities. You know, now we've got to have people, you know, uh, that are dangerous, separated from society. But we have an obligation, as a modern society, to treat people and restore them. So that seems like there'd be a big relationship between the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department and social services. Yes, we've got to have that. We've got to, with all our treatment providers, all our ser social service agencies, uh, the courts, everyone needs to work together. It's not just a police problem. Uh, it, it, the truth of the matter is that a lot of these things are, are placed at the feet of the law enforcement, okay? Uh, well. Uh, it's a societal problem, and society needs to commit funding, resources, et cetera, and provide uh, uh, treatment options. Uh, okay, so as Philip Snedeker, as Bernalillo County Sheriff, what would you be doing differently, and what would you do to help keep us safer? Uh, Number one is what we're going to do, Diane, is this. We're, we're going to get engaged and involved with this community, okay, and have a meaningful dialogue with them. We're going to find out exactly uh, what the, the problems are of each neighborhood and each area. We're going to do a comprehensive assessment, okay, of uh, statistically uh, where the crime's occurring, what crimes, specific crimes are occurring, and we're gonna deploy rapidly resources, I mean personnel, to those areas. And very honestly, that's, that's how you suppress crime, that's how you stop crime. You identify the areas, the perpetrators, uh, uh, the time of day uh, that things are happening, and you get people over there, okay? You listen to your community, you engage with your community, you identify their problems and their concerns, and you move in cohesion with them to address the, these issues, but... Uh, Just kind of give me an example, Philip. Uh, I can give you an example going back to... Uh, 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 I was in uh, a small town, Tucum, carrying the state police, okay? Simply involved on a daily basis with, with business owners and people. I had a business owner tell me, you know, Phil, every, every Friday and Saturday night, all the local teenagers park in our parking lot here, they throw trash everywhere, they're smoking dope, which was prohibited, it still is, and uh, they're drinking, uh, they're causing problems, okay? So it's what I did was I talked to the other officers that I was working with, and we quickly put together a tactical plan in about a three-week period. We, he told us what times it was occurring, when it was happening. We worked and connected with the city police. We went down there and we stopped it, okay? We arrested people, we right. charged them, we got them appropriately uh, placed with, uh, relative to what needs they had, things of this sort. But you could go down that street. Well, that, those are kids who are, you know, on the weekends, yes. letting off some steam. But how about more serious situations in Bernalillo County with the drug and alcohol problem of uh, a, a, a business on Central or in the unincorporated area being broken in time and time again I, by I, the repeat offenders? How? I think, again, okay, you can identify, <coughs> excuse me, those specific businesses that are being targeted. You can. We okay. read, I'll give you an example there, all the time. People are pulling trailers in. These are people crossing the country. They park up here at the, uh, the Ramada, right at Manal, and, and that's within the area of the Sheriff's Department. It is, it's in Bernalillo County. Sure. Someone's but coming, all in, uh, I someone's coming in at night and they're hooking up to that trailer, okay, and pulling off with all their belongings. Oh, like, at the hotels. Our hotels, our visitors. We they hear come. that time and time again. Yes, yes. What does that tell me? It tells me one thing. The desk clerk is in on it, number one. He's notifying his buddies and they are going and doing this at night. There is obviously no security or securities involved in it, okay. So is what we need to do. It, it, you and I could figure it out ourselves, Diane. You and I need to go in there and it, we know when this is happening in the times, et cetera. We need to sit up in that parking lot in an undercover capacity, okay? And we need to apprehend the people that are doing this. 
We could even, yeah. uh, you and I could drive in there and, and uh, go in and say Have a decoy tra trailer saying what? gold bars in, inside. <laughs> go inside and <laughs> register for a room, say we, we're, yeah. we're traveling across the country and we'll have other oh. officers out, out waiting and when uh, the, the criminals show up that night, we're gonna arrest them. It, that's the arresting part, but what about your concern uh, about the mental health and treatment programs for those people? I mean, that's what yes. you feel is fueling all a lot of our problems. 80% of those 7,700 are yes. fueled by drug and alcohol and mental illness. In that kind of scenario, what would happen to I, these folks? It's what you'd need to do, and again, probation and parole would be involved in this in the background checks we we're telling you about. Same thing, the jail has, uh, MDC has social workers, they have uh, people on staff, okay, you're able to make an assessment of the person and their background. Then you, you, you direct them okay. to the appropriate course of treatment, either within the facility. Now, if, if this is a repeat violent offender or a repeat offender that's done this repeatedly over and over and over, they need to go to prison, they do, Diane, and we have those uh, uh, programs to restore and treat people in prison. Yes, they're being stabilized, they're not harming the community anymore. We're gonna treat them and we're gonna uh, uh, move them back into society where they're restored, then they'll be under supervision again and we will aid in that process, get them a job, Get them involved in education, uh, uh, restore them, lift them up. Who, what department do you think, Philip, who's responsible overall? Because the sheriff's department seems like they only have to react when there's a crisis. But to avoid, what about avoiding? Of course, education is the key, but yes. avoiding this person to start breaking in or stealing trailers in the first place. I, we've got to get much more involved than we do. In, in, you hit the key word, okay? We don't want to be solely reactive. We want to be proactive and stop things. So we've got but to is that your responsibility as sheriff? It is. It certainly is. We need to get involved with our schools. We need to get. We do. We need to have resource officers there. We need to work with human services uh, where people need parenting skills. Uh, every day, we're the first ones to encounter people in their situations. Okay, uh, you need to uh, work with the proper providers and uh, say these. We have identified these people. They need your services. And uh, we need to, uh, that's where it's so important to be involved with the community. We're, we're part of the community and, and yes, we are gonna be involved in any issue, not just uh, what people traditionally want us to do, arrest people. Uh, <laughs> if if okay. some family that's needs- That's been the role, I mean that's yeah, been the role. Yeah, we need to be involved in everything. It's, when I was in the state police, we went up, when there were, all these fires we're having, but we'd, we'd go and help, honestly, we would, uh, uh, wherever we could, uh, you know, we weren't interested in uh, Anything any else, Phil, that I haven't pointed out? I mean, I'm, no. so in, I'm interested in your background and learning no, all these things. No, I would just things, die and say this, that I have a comprehensive background, and I think that's what distinguishes me and, and uh, 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 differentiates me from uh, other p people that are involved in the race is my educational preparation, my extensive law enforcement background, and my desire, uh, I assure you, it's, it's unparalleled, my desire to be of service to this community and to move this community, as I said, to greatness. We're gonna, we're, we are, Diane, we're, we're gonna... Uh, What's the relationship between the sheriffs and the city police? It needs to be a very cooperative and, and uh, very cohesive relationship. We need to work very well with them. We need to uh, uh, engage in, in joint efforts. We need to share training uh, opportunities. We need to share equipment. Uh, we need to... Uh, do they do that now? Uh, they do. And okay. My experience has always been, and I'd say that to anybody, uh, the working men and women of law enforcement, and I want to say that, uh, I support them, I endorse them in their efforts. Uh, they're good men and women. They've made extreme sacrifices uh, for those careers, and I applaud them. And th they always work very well together. All law enforcement agencies do. And you're feeling, uh, Philip Snedeker, regarding cameras um, for 
sheriff's deputies and use of force. Uh, the we need to ex excess use of yes, force. Yes, we uh, excessive use of force is is definitely. Uh, not going to be tolerated, okay? People will be held accountable, okay? We must and will have, and we do, it's mandated by law, body cameras. And anyone that would oppose body cameras, uh, uh, I disagree with. I am in full support and endorse the use of body cameras, and I endorse uh, constant and, and, and uh, recurring Oversight. That's what an administrator does of all the practices and all the processes and everything that's going on in the sheriff's department. That's what an administrator needs to be doing. And when people have done well, commend them. When people have done things that are egregious and are unacceptable, they need to be held accountable up to and in, in involving prosecution. Uh, and uh, I learned it in the state police, uh, uh, Diane. Uh, the best weapon a person has, okay, it's not your sidearm, okay, it, it's your ability to think, to defuse things, and to get along, and, and that's... And to get along. To get along, to, to communicate, to work with people. What about the use of technology in the Sheriff's Department? It, we've got to have the, the latest uh, uh, technology. Uh, and we've got to make sure all our officers are properly equipped, properly trained, and have all the tools they need to, to perform And the numbers, job. I guess there's nearly 300 officers, but almost 90% capacity. Is there a problem with the number of officers we have? No, there's not. There's, okay. the, uh, the Sheriff's Department is, is, is uh, it's 325 officers, and there's 205, I believe, uh, support uh, civilian uh. employees. So 325 sworn individuals. and. Uh, uh, we do want to always be looking at staffing levels, okay? And uh, so uh, uh, we can always uh, make sure that, that every area is adequately staffed, everyone is able to do their job, things of that sort. We, we certainly want to keep a, uh, a track of that. And, and uh, uh, at this point in time, uh, uh, they're doing very well. They're, they're fully staffed. That's good. Good news. Well, thank you. We've got, had a number of candidates. Philip Snedeker, thank you so much for throwing your hat in and for your 47 years of public thank service you. that you've committed to this state. That's that's commendable, and we appreciate a lot of the you know candidates have had public service in their background, and now there are a number of you with passion who want to have the top job. Thank you. And we appreciate that. We appreciate those running. I mean, it takes a sacrifice for themselves and their families to run for Bernalillo County Sheriff. There are a number of folks, and we are pleased to introduce you to those who have accepted our invitation. And today, Philip Snedeker was my guest, and we wish him the best. Thank you for watching the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater. Make it a great week with your family. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. In the Army National Guard, family means everything. Our parents, they were really supportive that all five of us would join. I got my education because of the Guard. I got to travel a little bit and experience a whole different culture. It helped me get my job, it helped me pay for my house. Being part-time really helped because I could have some opportunities that were still in education. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard instills pride that you and your family will share. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. Issues and Answers with your host Diane Kinnewater is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. To comment on today's program or to purchase a copy of any Issues and Answers program, visit sunbroadcasting.org or call us at 505-345-1991.